what is up my dogs it's your boy mike mason here for a special fireside chat yo um yushin I mean, do i need to say anything more um we have some really special footage ahead uh kind of a throwback to a stream we did when we visited the museum in 2018 uh huge shout outs to everyone there uh, amanda and eric and yeah i mean the whole crew out there is amazing and everyone at the studio um, and yeah, so I want to give them a shout out for making this special thing possible. Uh, speaking of special things, let me introduce my lovely co-host, uh, Carrie Strope. Good one. You're so cute. My baby. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to be here. Thanks everybody for joining us. We've got a good one in, in, uh, in store for you from what I hear this evening. So I'm excited to see this. Yeah, 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 totally. Heck yeah. Um, and yeah, now some of you guys might remember we streamed this live um, and I was off like uh, talking with Susie Silbert, the curator at the museum and doing just some special things. And uh, we had friends who were there kind of seeing what was going on, just jump on the camera. Uh, and that, that the footage was a little rough. So I now have taken the time to really kind of go through this with a, a fine tooth comb or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm pretty proud with where this stands, and, and I think it'll be a much better look at this process. Uh, Yushin is going to make an implosion marble, uh, which is essentially, uh, you know, taking glass and going from one place to another and carrying a pattern with it. That's the best way I can describe it. Probably not the best way, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to make you guys wait too long. I did want to announce something, uh, kind of a friend of the show. We've got some amazing footage to share of an artist, uh, Dan Hoffman. If you guys aren't familiar, man, his work is incredible, and he's got an online class coming up. So I wanted to just take a second to shout that out, man. Um, it's like with Dustin Revere's online school thing. That looks cool, too. But I just wanted to take a moment to announce this class because you know, Dan says he'll be covering small stuff, uh, large-scale scientific stuff. His work's truly incredible. I'm a huge fan, and he's a really nice guy, a graduate of Salem a Community College up there. Uh, and, you know, so he's like good, has a degree in scientific glass and really shows. So, uh, anyways, uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and, and pop this party off. Glass Central Station, y'all, that's us. And, you know, guys, um, what I get to do, th this honor I have of, you know, sharing these amazing things from amazing events, uh, these companies pitch in every month to help me get over the financial wall of, you know, all the travel arrangements. And, and we go through a few hard drives a year now. It, it's th There's one thing after another, and it, it, these companies pitch in. It's not cool to talk about money, but I mean, it, it, it really is, uh, like I said, a financial wall that these guys, you know, push us over. This isn't a big money business. The entire structure is public, but like we're right on the verge of this coverage being sustainable. And, you know, we donate a lot of our time and all that because it's, you know, a passion for us. But, you know, these companies really help make, make it possible for us to be there and execute this passion. So... I just we just take a minute to give them a, a, a shout out and then we'll get on with the with the glass and all these cats are awesome i really appreciate them and some of y'all out there on torch pass pitching in now here's you sheen the homie we're here on the amphitheater floor at the corning museum of glass an amazing place that you know glass gods of all kinds uh have graced now let's talk about the tubing for this. This is a hollow implosion, and uh, Yushin gave some really specific advice about this. He said uh, that his favorite tubing for this is 40 millimeters by 2.3 on the wall. And um, his advice was that any medium wall tubing is going to be ideal, and anywhere from 2 to 2.5 millimeters is, is kind of the golden zone for these things. So... You know, you can do them on any size, but definitely look for um, that medium wall uh, weight to it. So just something to keep in mind there. And I thought that was cool. He just pulled that down and then put a little stress in there and gave it a snap. Now, now these dots, um, 
when the homie talks about laying these down, he lays that dot in the center first, and then uh, he uses like a triangulation technique. So he'll lay the first dot, and then the second dot, and then he'll look at where it kind of makes a triangle to lay the next dot. And then he'll do the same with the third dot, and then at that point he goes in and fills in the dots in between. And that allows him to lay this pattern, and once you've got these initial dots laid, he calls it like a flower pattern. Um, once you've got these initial dots laid down, it really becomes easy and kind of like uh, self-defining where the rest go because you're just filling in the spaces in between. So j just something to think about with laying that pattern down, you know. I, you don't have to do it that way, but the way Yushin was recommending was starting with that center dot, triangulate out, and then you'll be on your way. Um... And, you know, I was, like, so brief about Yushin, you know, I was just like, Yushin! And that's true, but, I mean, this guy, he's known for such intricate and beautiful patterned work. Um, that's Eric Goldschmidt in the background, by the way, guys. We'll be watching him the whole time, and then he's going to assemble a goblet that they collaborated on. Um, you know, and Yushin's the filicello work, and then, but that's just one facet of it. These marbles are really amazing, too. Um, so he's laid in this initial dot pattern here, and he's, you could see he's kind of giving them a, like, they're, he's not going to cook them all the way in, but he's got them all, like, feeling happy now, to the point that he could come in and lay these smaller dots down with Stringer. And it's pretty much just, you're starting with this, and then it's almost like a hexagon pattern of branching out in between. Um, like I said, he calls it a flower pattern. Uh, you know, so it's almost like big, big petals and small details or whatever. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's quite intricate. And, and, you know, this footage, like I said, man, I was off talking with, uh, Susie Silbert, the curator of the museum at this time. So we just had homies who were in the audience step in a uh, huge shout outs to everybody who helped us with the camera. I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, but it, you know, I really wanted to cut this down to, to what was clean and followable. So it's not like normal where we would watch the full hour it took him to do this. Um, but I hope you guys can get a good idea of what's going on. Um, and trying to keep it as tight as possible. Sometimes that can be a blessing. And yeah, you know, Eric Goldschmidt, guys, he is, um, he is uh, the program supervisor at the museum. Let me, let, well, the programs of glass. All right, let, let's not mess around. Let me just get this proper. Because, uh, and more importantly, you know, Eric is an amazing flame worker and educator and someone I consider and I'm lucky to, to call a friend. Uh, he's someone who is, uh, okay, he is the properties of glass programs supervisor for the museum. Uh, and, you know, but he's somebody who was a pipe maker years ago, uh, and he kind of interfaces and plays this, you know, very important intermediary role, you know, between our world and this, uh, this wider world, you know, that the Corning Museum represents, which is, you know, it, it's everybody. It's the, the most amazing glass workers ever, and, you know, the way they honor our craft. And, uh, but Eric is kind of the guy helping us kind of bridge that gap. Um, and he's on the gas board now as well. It, 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 we're so lucky to have someone like him in this position who is just incredibly eloquent and kind. Uh, now, actually, here we're going to start getting into this pattern being melted in. And, uh, you know, with, with these implosions, uh, so much is important about the angle of the flame. Uh, I think he might actually do a little more of the dots. So this might be in, uh, another one of those uh, intermediate steps. I could be wrong. Uh, regardless, he's going to cook all of this in. Uh, and once he actually cooks it in, that's when he actually starts the implosion. Um, it's really all about the angle of the flame and uh the the angle of the piece you know which is such that uh clear is coming from the outside and and literally like scooping around and such that the center is being pulled in 
and the pattern is going to shrink and it's going to thicken up on the end and all right so here yeah it's all cooked in and he's starting the implosion now and you know it really just just look at that angle it's not too severe or a little bit of flattening as he went there but it's just so much to, important to pay attention to the angle that he's at and the way that he's approaching this thing and I'm not the master of this, but for me, it, it kind of came together when I realized I was thinking about it as, um, it's really just condensing, you know, you do this when you condense the glass back to make a spoon, you know, and, and it's like, it's easy to psych yourself out sometimes, you know, it's like, you've done this before, baby, you know, but we get worried about all this. Now, he mentioned uh, marvering and kind of helping to push some clear to the back and help it go around the outer edge. And this was primarily to speed up the process, as opposed to, like, being essential. And there's Eric in the back actually assembling one of the first collabs that they did, which is which had the filicello that you guys saw in the live streams from the previous day. Oh, that's G. Brian, yo, one of the homies from Corning, man. Shout outs. I'm so lucky to have gotten to meet all these people and recognize them and such because they really are all super kind and dare I say they have the luxury of choice there. You know, they hire really great people and amazing glass workers, but so far as I can tell, also amazing people. So here this bad boy is condensed and look at this punty that he formed. Uh, it's kind of like a surgical implement, I would say, to, to gouge in there and pull material out of the center because when you do these implosions um especially like he flattened it a few times as he went you know and that helps preclude forming this big you know uh concave area that that uh, can trap air and all of that but he used that thing to kind of surgically get in there and, and pull that all out and bring it to a point without having to like devastate the pattern you know so I just thought that was something neat to notice, that just that punny. It was just explaining how wide and deep his love for Torch Talk is. <laughs> no, but for real, Yush is, is the fucking man. Um, when we were up in Corning, we actually had like a meetup at a bar. And in walks in in the middle of the fucking meetup is Yushin and uh, N8, you know, like Nate Myers, who was like TAing his class or whatever. And it just blew my mind. And he's just like the most down to earth guy. And you know, having the pleasure to kick it with this dude, he's, he was really a, an incredibly genuine person. And you know, we were, uh, me and Kara we were just watching the footage, you know, and listening to him talk and, um, you know, I was just talking about what a nice guy he is and how genuine he is. And he's got like a million dad jokes. Probably my favorite thing about you, Sheen, man. He's got like the best dad jokes always. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so he's rounding this bad boy out a bit. Uh, terminated it out. And now he's going to help kind of start turning it into a marble. We're going to get all that clear tubing off or whatever, but... At this point in the process, he wanted to start kind of uh, pushing it in the right direction of shaping, I would say. And there's Eric back there. Look at that. I mean, if you look in the video description, uh, there's a link to that cup uh, and the cup that we're about to see get, get put together. Um, and, and so you can see where this is all going. Yeah, if somebody was asking in the chat about the tubing, uh, Yushin was saying that his favorite is 40 millimeters by 2.3. And uh, he was very specific about medium wall being the deal. So 2 mil to 2.5 mil is kind of your uh, range there. Now there he did, um, you know, kind of blew out the rest of that glass there. And now he's just going to pull it off and clean that up. Like I said, man, random homies, man, a few different homies stepped onto the camera uh, while we were there to film, and uh, we were off doing other things, so 
or some moments that I would have loved to catch, but, you know, it doesn't happen. But y'all have seen that done on quite a few processes before, so you, you guys know what happened there. But look at how beautifully the side of that is cooking back. That edge. Oh, molecular tree in the chat said, smash that like button train, or whatever. Yeah, I'm not that, you know, our thing is so niche that we're not typical YouTubers, you know. We, we're like, we're cramming content down your throat and demanding likes and all that shit, you know. But it does, it does, it means a lot when somebody like Yusheen comes by and sees that 150 people like this demo, or, you know. So if you guys smash that thing for Corning and smash that thing for Yush that I can say and if you don't mind hit that subscribe button and the little bell thing so you guys get notifications like I said we're not we're not gonna cram a bunch of junk down your throat it's a video or two a week and it's all gonna be dank shit uh, so here man the homie punnied up to the back he says he likes 12 mil for that so that he has like a bit of a stable um, a stable place to to round this thing out from and then if he wants to add glass to form a lens, uh, there's all sorts of things that can happen here. But uh, the what he's doing now, of uh, rounding this out and kind of just letting it, be, you know, get closer to a marble, um, that really uh, helps to have a, a solid connection there. So like I said, that, I think that's 12 mil solid that he's got on it. And yeah, this thing already is really, really, really is starting to look amazing. You know, all those little dots have just, you know, I said it's hard to describe an implosion, but it really is. It's pulling that clear and letting it gather and everything is thickening up on the face. Uh, and when the angle is right, you know, it's like gravity and such makes it come down on the edges. And, and if the heat is directed properly, you know, that's going to move more and it's going to pull that pattern into the back, you know. And it really is, it's an implosion or whatever. The glass actually does implode into itself. But it's just a matter of directing the glass, you know, from the back to, around to the front, and then that forces what was in the front into the middle if you heat it properly and have the angles proper and all that. And look at that marble is already really starting to come together. And now it's like... um very much uh, a typical game of uh, switch your uh, axis and such, you know, and get it into the shape that you want. And then uh, for this, this isn't going to be like a marble that, you know, you're going to like uh, keep as a marble. It's going to be made into the stem of one of these goblets. And it ends up looking really, really cool. And we're going to get to see uh, all of that process. But now it's, you know, he, he got that... Um, that big handle off the back and now he cleaned that up and it's just a matter of cleaning up all the faces and getting it to the point that he can attach the uh, additional stuff and he's it's gonna, a lot of oh i'm sorry a cold seal right here but that last one it looked like, was it a little bit hotter somebody in chat asked but i, I kind of missed it because i was watching chat i mean he just tapped that one off and it left some glass you know as you can see so it wasn't a perfectly cold seal he's gonna pull that off and then just cook it in what about um, the, but the one before it, though? The the big one? Yeah. The, the big one was definitely a hot seal. He had to clean up some glass there to get that bad boy off. Because that whole thing was getting so hot at that point that he was letting it round out, you know, that the heat would have drifted back to that seal anyway. So even if it started cold, it was probably going to end hot, you know. But he wanted a good, solid connection there. So this is a more of a cold seal, though, because it's punnied to a spot that isn't going to um, have anything but, like, uh, one of those posts on it. But he doesn't want to, like, seal to it just yet. It's gonna seal to a color and everything. Right now it's just punnied up. And he's just taking the opportunity, you know, treating it like a traditional marble, at which point you, you just gotta change the axis enough times by punnying to different angles of it, you know, the, and rounding it, that you end up you know, with a essentially perfectly round marble. And once you get the flow of that, you know, that happens with a couple of steps. But if you're me, it takes like eight steps. 
So it kind of depends how comfortable you are and how comfortable you are um, letting the rest, like, you know, the more of it you can get hot, the more of it rounds out. But you, that heat might drift back to the punny, kind of what I was mentioning earlier, and a cold seal will become a hot seal. And then you end up having to, to go back to that side because you've left too much glass, you know. And that's why I end up having eight steps, you know, because I leave too much glass somewhere and I end up having to do a few more axis switches. But for use, that was just a, like an axis switch or two, and, and that thing is pretty damn round. And it's going to become the stem of a goblet, so it doesn't have to be that type of um, round where, like, if it's, like, deviates, you know, by, like, a micro millimeter or whatever, you know, like, there's some guys who can detect that or if they're, like, grading baseball cards, man. They're like, oh, I'm only looking for tens here, baby. And the market is pretty severe about that, you know, if, if your work isn't round in the marble game, man, like, you'll get called out for it very fast. So yeah, now he, he uh, has added this this big solid um, connection and uh, just built the glass up a bit because he wanted a diameter that was closer to like, you know, 9 or 10 or, you know, whatever it'll be. And yeah, that's Eric Goldschmidt in the back who I was shouting out earlier, the Properties of Glass program supervisor, doctor, and published author, Eric Goldschmidt. Now I'm just playing, but... um. Has, yeah. has he applied for his online doctorate yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but no, for real, man, the, the homie is uh, an employee of the museum, often doing their public demos. You know, you might see him on the local news channels in New York and such, doing fun demos or see him in the museum. And, you know, we're lucky enough, to, like I was mentioning earlier, to have him as something of an interface between Corning and, and the, the pipe world. And uh, he's he's also just one of the kindest human beings I know. I, I really think he's a great guy. I, I, I can't uh, give him a shout out enough. So here it's getting one on the other side. And the idea is that this will be posted up in the middle of the goblet. So you'll be looking into the face of the implosion, you know, or whatever. So yeah, just building up that other post. Looks like one of those um, molten aura colors, I think. <laughs> you saw that. Yeah, the, the homies in chatter. I've given Eric a few street names over the years, and <laughs> one of them is Daddy Flat Sheets. <laughs> and, uh, man, he, you know, uh, in addition to being an amazing cup maker, one of the things that he, I, I think, is known for is uh, sculpting on flat sheets. And, um, he, you know, faces and things like that uh, out of, you know, literally the f flat uh, panes of glass. <laughs> and it's a really cool technique and yeah th so that's why I gave him that nickname there's been a few others I'm struggling to remember them now but they're all equally inane I'm sure with a few more beers we'll remember yeah alright so he's got this post here and he wants to make uh, these rods loop around it and then he's gonna decorate them it's, it's like Almost, you know, has like a, one of these, like a classic Venetian look or whatever. So these seals are going to start somewhat rough. And he'll clean them up. But we're just going to watch him soak a lot of heat in here. And I think at this point, uh, my dog who was filming was kind of trying to catch Eric in the background and some of the important steps of this cup. So that's it's a hard thing to jump back and forth between, but... um. Essentially, we're going to see you uh, soaking heat into segments of those rods and then using um, tweezers or even in glass rods uh, to kind of just push them into the rough uh, round shape. And then once it's actually sealed, uh, then he's going to soak a lot more heat into it and um, kind of let gravity and everything kind of make them into essentially perfect uh, accent uh, pieces or whatever around the marble. 
And I thought this was super cool. And then he's also going to like uh, dot them up and pull them out to little points. It's It looks like something like if he collaborated with Cesare Toffolo or something. But it's all Yush. Just another facet of his... You know, you don't think about what this guy does when he makes a goblet stem. And, and like, it honors the past. It, 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 I don't know. I think it's cool. And Yush is an awesome artist and not 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 one dimensional at all, you know, kind of thing. And there's Eric in the back. You know, kind of opening that cup and um you know, using those jacks to get the initial opening and then we'll see him use some parchofi, which is like the graphite jacks uh, to finish shaping up that cup. It looks like Yusha's just putting some heat back into that marble. Keep that bad bitch hot. It's, uh... Yeah, so there's those graphite jacks. You can see the homie working with in the back. And just kind of rotating it. The angle of those jacks is important uh, to get it in there and let it just kind of rest on those points. And see, yeah, Yusha's now cooking those things in. likely doing a, what salt calls air bridging you know which is just heating enough of it and then maybe even hitting it with some air to cool it down real quick so we can keep working or just just using and letting it air cool enough that he can keep working on the other side kind of thing and then it's after that what well, i was gonna say general in, in chat was asking about the uh how well those marbles hold their heat and how often you have to go back in and Give them a little flash so that they don't thermal shock. It looks like he, he really lets it go every, like, minute or two, you know? He lets it go a good little while. And then we saw Eric kind of giving that cup, you know? Like, after the parchofi kind of lifts the wall out for the most part. Like he kind of uh, let that uses that paddle, see, to um, let it kind of almost spin out against the paddle. And it really just gives that outside edge that super crisp, you know? It goes from, like, being almost perfectly whatever to, like, bam, just the way he wants it. And now it looks like he's flaring it out even more and using that the back of that paddle to give it a specific angle. So, yeah, I wish the homie had moved the camera up a little more because I would like to see Yushin doing some more of these bends. We'll see a couple of them, and um, but you get the idea. It's more that he's soaking that heat nicely into it. You can even see the rod, how it's glowing. You know, he heats up a good bit more than he wants to bend and then just bends it around. But, um, man, look at Eric go. Woo! Right? But anyways, look at how he's taking the time to soak that heat into that rod, and then he's just going to kind of let it, like, droop down and help it control and kind of come into place. Um, but, okay, here we go. See that? He's kind of just letting it like, droop in there and then and then controlling how it, uh, how it lands when it cools. And he's going to do the same thing on the other side. And, um... Once he actually gets them sealed up, I think is when some really important stuff happens, and we'll get to see that. So it's kind of hard to get two things at once. So I can sympathize with the homie. There he's using them on the outside edge there. Eric's got moves, baby. <laughs> <laughs> homies were asking how parchofi is spelled it's p-a-r-c-h-o-f-f-i that's right so yeah it's it's like a pair of jacks on the same <laughs> spring you know handle or whatever um but graphite which really allows you to kind of sit in the flame and that can be very helpful. Man, look at the homie going to town on that. And that marble is gorgeous. Who was that sexy guy in the background that just walked by? Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh la la.
All right, now here's where he's going to, now that he's got those things looped around, he's going to get them sealed in by adding um, glass carefully and then cooking it in and then adding a little more and just get, getting it exactly how he wants. And at that point, you'll get to see, like, uh, he's going to be able to heat up pretty big swaths of, of that of rod and kind of just let it even itself out, so to speak, because it's bridged. And it's almost like a two-piece Sherlock, you know, like once it's bridged up, you can soak a bunch of heat into it and, and there's no blowing and all that here, but, you know, and for a lot of glass blowers, they'd be like, that shit looks perfect already. But Yusha's incredibly exacting. Oh shit, the homie Dub Glassworks in the chat. Um, good to see you, my dog. He said, well, you should be doing another implosion. Nah, man, you'll have to scroll back at a little bit later, man. The implosion already happened. It was pretty quick. But there he is, adding and removing material. And yeah, you is really a perfectionist. Um... I've seen him catch stuff that, you know, I really, really, really had to study to see, and he's gotten so good at, at these techniques that, you know, your eye becomes more refined the more that you do it, you know, and a lot of that is just seeing your own mistakes and being like, God damn it, you know, and then you avoid that, and anyways, Yushin has the, a true eye of a perfectionist and the ability to execute on it. Uh-oh. Yeah. That's something that gets you... Uh... Yeah, just hand torching it up and and uh, just really going to get that glass to flow together so that it you know has the same has a smooth flow, and y'all know what he's doing. Just watch how he does it. That piece is gorgeous, or what? Right, like those yeah, colors that's... and the white surrounding them. Ah, oh, gosh. Is there anything the man can't turn gold? So yeah, there we go. Those are just starting to look super smooth. And yeah, like I said, the the finishing touch though is really once he gets those seals done and can really start to soak a bunch of heat into the uh, into those rods. So yeah, that seal or whatever just needed a little more glass. So we added it, and now we'll cook it in, and... Just taking his time to do it right, and, um... I'm gonna really make this look great. Now here's where, like I mentioned, he's really starting, now that the seals are done, he's heating up like a quarter, you know, or half of that side at once. And kind of letting it just smooth itself out. 
you know, and gravity, and then just, you know, like I see there he was just using a cold rod to um, maneuver it into the exact orientation or whatever. All right, and now he's going to start... Um, I think he's adding these decorative elements here. I don't think that was extra glass for the rod, but it might have been. Maybe it was extra glass uh, for the rod. Because once it all cooked in there and it, it started to even out, you know, maybe he noticed that that side needed a little more material. I mean, it must have been or he wouldn't have added it, but. One of those type of things where, like, it was hard for me to see what was wrong in the first place, but you saw something that he didn't like, you know, and so he added that, and now, I mean, does it look like he just scraped on anything? No, but now it looks extra perfect, so. There he's using a little bit of the paddle action to, uh, to reinforce the shape that he wants. Just really subtle stuff to get this thing to have that, that classic look. Which, you know, and his level of perfectionism here is almost absurd because some of the best, like, Venetian work, you know, that's regarded as the best ever, if you look at it up close, it's not meant to be, like, ultra, uh, symmet you know, symmetry and all that. It's, there's all these little tiny flaws and stuff, but the overall look of it is, is what it's about, generally speaking. You know, some of the finest pieces and the pieces they'll put on posters at the Murano Museum and stuff. When you look at it, like all the little accentuations, uh, some you know, none of them are are um, are all identical or super clean. But that's not what it's about. It's about like how it reads to the to the brain of the viewer. You know, when a lot of those the. the uh, the cumulative effect of all that stuff is such that the mind is overwhelmed and it's like, ah, oh, glass tickles your brain. Yush does all those things and actually cares about the details. Like every little detail has to be just right. I've seen him scrap stuff that was absolutely incredible. And Eric back there, just the cup machine. <laughs> he really is an excellent educator. He has a uh, DVD, if you can be lucky enough to find it now. Um, I think Corning, maybe, maybe they ran out, so it's not in the store now. Uh, he has a DVD on stemware that's just excellent. He explains everything super well. He has, like, pieces that he stopped at certain points in the process so he can really show you all these different details. Yo, shout-outs to the dog, Will Young. You can catch him at deepskydew.com. I know y'all. some of y'all have been like, where's Will? But, you know, he's been focused on his space thing, and, you know, me and Carrie were really doing the bulk of the, you know, stuff that was actually being seen on the show, so... Anyways, uh, like I said, huge shout-outs to Will, man. Like I said, give him a follow at Deep Sky Dude and his exploration of astronomy. Plane flying? Yeah. But back then, we were Hunter Thompson and Dr. Gonzo. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where he's going to start uh, dotting each of those rods on the outside. And um, and I think this is really neat. It's like these miniature spikes. And like this is one that you guys can, can definitely steal and put on anything. And use this technique to pull them out to these little tiny sharp points. And see Eric there. I mean if you notice how much heat he soaked into that thing. You know and now he's pushing in the top there to give it that perfect flush. Uh, type of vibe. But if you don't heat up enough glass and then you try and push that lip in, it's just going to look all jank. Uh, Walker in the chat asks if you can see Will's footage. Yeah, that demo is already up. Um, that that came out years ago. Um, I think it's like Cup Shaping with Eric Goldschmidt. Let me look it up real quick. Nice. Yeah. Um, Torch Talk 176. Uh, goblet shaping with Eric Goldschmidt. 
featuring Yusheen. So yeah, that uh, show is like Will's footage of Eric that he was filming when, when they were working on various cups together. So here's where he started to add these dots. And look how he's adding them. He's doing it like he's going back and forth, I think, to... Uh, I mean, maybe he's doing it just to distribute heat, but I think he's doing it to really keep the, the pattern on each one identical. So that they end up with the exact same amount of dots, you know, because he's going from one side to the other and putting them in the same positioning. So yeah, March 14th, 2018, Torch Talk 176. Nice. Yeah, if you guys want to see Eric doing that. And then we've got some amazing stuff with Eric. There's a, a video that we filmed also during this trip where Eric did... It's like a footed uh, dish that also has a lid. And it's used to teach uh, hunt, uh, hollow work fundamentals. So in making this piece, you learn to do all these various steps that will kind of establish your fundamentals in hollow glass. That's an absolutely spectacular uh video he talks about a lot of the things that he gets into in, in the, the the dvd that i mentioned which is called flame worked goblets a lesson with eric goldschmidt uh, if you can find that it, it is really really excellent but if you can take a class with Eric, even better. He teaches, uh, you know, I see it. It looks like he teaches a couple times a year when COVID hasn't <laughs> wrecked the uh, the thing there. Yeah, since Corning's open, it sounds like they're doing hot shop demos and such, but, but no flame working yet. Okay, got it. Yeah, they have come up with some systems so that everybody can have masks on but still inflate the glass. They've got like a foot-powered uh, air pedal or whatever. Which reminds me of Jason Gordon, uh, the homie that Live Free. Uh, he has a video about his pedal. It's called the Vax Stacker. And it's what I use to do encasements. And it's essentially a pedal. Um, he puts all the plans up. It's not expensive at all. Uh, but mine is all fit into a Pelican case. But uh, it happens to have like a pump that gives you access to the intake and the outtake lines in the same way. So it's got a, it's got two hoses coming out of it. And one of them is the intake, which is uh, normally what you would uh, use for you know to create a vacuum but if you put it on the other you can totally use it to inflate and jason does that to inflate cups on the lathe and stuff like that so he's a little bit ahead of his time there as far as i can tell and yeah here's the homie adding all of these dots and he's going to cook them in and then go through and clean each one up and pull them out to these little points. Really cool technique. This really goes to show you how versatile uh, Yushin is as a glass worker. He's a versatile human as well. Incredible skateboarder. Probably plays the ukulele or something. Who knows? <laughs> So yeah, just a lot of small scale adding these things, uh, uh, small scale manipulations. A lot going on here. It's really cool. Oh, should I see Derek Weaver in the chat, my boy? Good to yeah. see you, man. Appreciate you. Richard Hazer that... popped in for a bit. Who's that? Richard Hazer popped in for oh, a bit. Hell yeah. Is that Josh Williams, my boy? Is this Joshua? Who, who's this Joshua? <laughs> Sounds all regal or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jeez. it's me, Joshua. <laughs> Robert Pelchest there, Hanoon in chat. Did to talk about glass, mate. Damn, all the homies in here. Hanoon, man, the homies stopped by. It was crazy. It was like living in 2019 when you actually had friends stop by. <laughs> it was great, man, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
See my boy Sigil Glass in the house, Robert Pelchat. Keeps me up to date with all the social ills in the world. <laughs> and it says, I hear you, Sheen makes killer pizza. He probably does. <laughs> That's been a bit of our thing, you guys. I uh, got this pizza oven. And me and Carrie have been heavily uh, working on doing, like, cold fermented dough. Like, we're really trying to make 10 out of 10 level Neapolitan pizza here at home because... Mike's Jones and travel and pizza so badly. I really am. I really am. There are some amazing pizza places, you know, like we're in Vegas four times a year for different events. And there's like this coal fired pizza place that I really like there. Um, <laughs> it's a little silly, but man, you know, sometimes you got to take uh, the things that you love into your own hands. And for me, that's that's pizza and like real no bullshit style Neapolitan, the real shit. Oh, it's been turning out fantastic too. Yeah, we we have been doing well as as far as I as far as I can tell. Oh, Mantis is asking for a demo. <laughs> y'all, uh, yeah. If y'all want a pizza demo, be careful. It might happen. I'm <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm as passionate about this as I am about glass at this point. Like <laughs> I'll show you guys some of the pizzas we've been making here after the demo. I, I downloaded a picture so you guys can see what we're talking about. Nice. Yep. And, you know, we're not experts, but uh, we've been doing a lot of research. Watched a few demos on YouTube. I think we're, we're ready Just to take on an apprentice. Day. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> On Apprentice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can find on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a pizza talk community already where all the things that we get made fun of happen as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Comes with the territory. I really would rather be surrounded by kind-hearted beginners, you know, than cold-hearted people who are all fucking cynical and just want to treat you poorly for trying to do something and create beautiful things not to get too deep about all that but there's something to be said for people like uh like all the people that were just on that screen man Yushin and uh eric and even will who was in the background there man and all these you know what i mean these people who have uh eschewed that that type of bullshit could you imagine Yushin being mean to somebody for asking a glass question? <laughs> like, I'd immediately be like, all right, what happened? Who replaced Yushin with a mean robot? What the fuck? <laughs> you know, and if it's, and then that's that type of thing. It's like, if it's good enough for Yushin, if it's good enough for Jason Lee, if it's good enough for Nate Myers, if it's good enough for Eric Goldschmidt, if it's good enough for Rashawn Jones, like, like, why the fuck do we need to deal with some bitch-made idiots trying to be mean to everybody on all the time? Right? Fuck those people, you know? And, and that's what it is. It's a matter of choosing together to not accept that bullshit, you know, that divisiveness for no good reason. There's a time for that. But n not over people just trying to learn to do something beautiful and all that, so... Well, divisiveness for no good reason. I don't know if there's ever time for that, but, you know. Well, there is, you know, and it's been it's been a time of awakening in our community. I mean, how many people have shown themselves to be fucking, you know, like, closeted racists and all that stuff, you know? There's a time to speak out in anger and, you know, contempt right. for your it's, fellow it's, human, it's, but... It's a good reason. <laughs> it damn sure ain't over some bullshit involving glass and learning and all that, you know what I mean? So it's like when people like these guys are so beautiful to the community, there's simply no reason or room uh, for people who don't, don't want to bring kindness. So, you know. Step back off that ledge, my friend. Or whatever. <laughs> Because <laughs> all that edge don't get you nowhere. So 
was your 2017 or 2018 visit to Corning, right? And Yush was teaching a class. That's correct. Yeah. So usually when they have visiting artists, they also do an amphitheater for the stage. And correct. Eric, Eric seems to get in an awful lot of collabs this way. It's a pretty sweet <laughs> position he's been up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, kind of one of the perks of being in that position for sure, but... I think it's just that Eric is a spectacular cup maker and definitely pipe maker well, who is that's kind of definitely why you know, he's in that position. Yeah. Yeah. The pipe making is what I meant to say, obviously. <laughs> no, Eric's amazingly knowledgeable, a really great guy. Uh, yeah. We're really, really lucky. Somebody was saying down in uh, St. Pete when they ran into him. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, I'm sorry. You were dead. I know I'm talking to Ray too. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. I just didn't mean to. Um, yeah, no, man. I mean, it's, yeah. All right, so here's what I was talking about where the homie is going through now and ever so gently tugging out each of these, these points. I hope we haven't been talking about pizza and other shit too long, but, you know, what do I really have to add here that. You know, I mean, just watch what the homie does and how he soaks that heat into each one. And this is after he already cooked them in. He's really taking his time here, you know. He's not, like, cooking it in and pulling it out at the same time. He went and cooked them all in, and that allows him to just get the tip of it hot and not really affect the connection. And each one of these is getting pulled out to this little tiny... It's fucking awesome. And, I mean, look at the look of it now. All those little points, I think, somehow maybe have a bit of uh, synchronicity with, like, all the tiny little dots in the piece in the middle, you know? Maybe it just looks cool. I don't know. Either way, it all fucking works. It's All of Yashin's pieces have this beautiful visual flow to them. And this little stem is no different, you know? I'd like to think maybe he was wandering around the museum, you know, coming out and getting to be inspired by all this classic stuff, you know, the Venetian things and all these different uh, time periods of glass. And because the look of this definitely reminds me of these classic cup forms and intricate stems, you know, that you would see back in the in those Venetian times. I'm not the person to talk about it, but there's this interesting crossover, and I understand... I mean, this is mostly, like, secondhand from Santini, who was, I, I think, talking about Toffolo and, and how... Um, and, and they were making uh, soft glass cups or, or whatever at, in the furnace, and then the stems needed to be done in a certain way that, that was just faster to do because it required that intricacy of the flame and... I don't want to retell the story wrong, but I understand that that was how he kind of got oriented towards the flame. It was part of his, his career. I don't want to speak wrong on that, but... Yeah, they're, they're, the situation was such that they were doing the, the stems at the torch and the rest of it at the furnace, you know? At the traditional way. Now, here's Eric Goldschmidt with some baller Herbert Arnold grabbers there spring loaded guys those are the large large ones i'm gonna do some grabber reviews coming up actually um you know i mentioned like we're, we don't really do much on this channel you know we do our weekly show and if something else is uploaded it's like something you know something cool so one of the things that'll be coming up here are individual grabber reviews and i've got multiples of these herbert arnold grabbers um and they're really great we'll talk about all the different things about them the main thing about them is that they only work in very small ranges. Like, that grabber right there is useless outside of, like, its 50 mil range or whatever, you know? So for a piece that size, perfect. Incredibly trustworthy and perfectly centered, and that spring gives it amazing hold. Um, but it, to, in order to really get a bunch of cups done in different sizes, you're going to need, like, a set of three of them or two or whatever it'll be. 
So that's the problem. It adds up to a lot of money to cover these specific ranges. Whereas something like Mattis Cookies Grabber, the S Vetro, or the, the, the Griffin Ultimate, which is a bit smaller, but still kind of has a big range, you know, much bigger range, but still kind of oriented towards being able to grab these, these cup forms and that sort of thing. All right, so we saw Eric, he removed that, that handle that was on that piece and cooked it back to like this connection glass. And now he's going to do this seal here and... Uh, start this thing into becoming it the, the cup that it that it wants to be. So yeah, doing his best to get these things. And I think Eric, if he were here, he would be like, "Don't get only get as much of this glass hot as you need to." So just enough to get that seal done and make a smooth connection. Don't be bleeding a ton of heat into everything. Look at that. He let them join together, gave them some time in the flame, and now it's going to be like letting them cool down together and like the right amount of tug and everything in glass is just pushing and pulling. He might let gravity do a little droop here just against the resistance in his hand, you know, but just trying to form that nice even connection, make sure everything is on center and in the right orientation. And that looks really great. So yeah, now he's going to remove this other one and do the same thing on the other side with the foot. And Yush is going to actually step over and keep that marble hot um, on a Bunsen. The rest of these pieces are pretty cold, or will get cold. And that's okay, but that marble can't can't do that. It's not playing that game. Yeah, the rest of the glass is about the same width, like volume-wise. Yeah. Oh, there's Frampio. Um, this dude does incredibly <laughs> tiny uh, filicellos and stuff. His work is shocking. Him and Dan Hoffman need to work together if they haven't already. Interesting. I bet they have. Anyway, super nice guy. He was out there taking Yushin's class, and then as I recall, they ended up getting to work together. I feel like they kind of hit it off. It's like Yushin and Yushin Jr. <laughs> no, because he makes like the super tiny. I mean, I'm not kidding. This dude has ones that like they just fit on your, the tip of your finger, and it's like, how the fuck is that possible? Only him and Dan Hoffman know, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to step away for just one second, Carrie. You uh, All right. compliment yeah. Eric Goldschmidt more, please. <laughs> yes, yes. Eric is amazing. Gardener as well. And a chef. My, he's been making some fresh pasta with his girlfriend this last winter. But anyway, back to the channel. Um, like I've been saying in chat, if you guys are really enjoying this, and then there's like 178 people watching now, that's really great. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, Yushin demos are always popular. But yeah, if you want to be here for the party and you don't want to miss it, make sure you hit that subscribe and the notification button, and then you'll get notifications through YouTube when we go live and pop in the chat, hang out with us, don't miss any episodes. And if you're enjoying this, give that thumbs up button a like and... Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this piece. So freaking beautiful. That marble is amazing. And there it goes. Yo, absolutely huge shout out uh, to Yushin and Eric and everyone at the Corning Museum for kind of opening their hearts and doors uh, to us and to you guys in this audience. I mean, it's because you guys are here that I got to do this. That we got to capture this. They weren't even running their own cameras that day, man. We were the only ones really? filming, That's you know? Awesome. Yeah. And uh, it means the world that uh, that these that these individuals out there and 
Let us do this thing, man. I can't can't say thank you enough to Yush and, and Eric. And, and Eric is, and is the best. Used to. Um, these companies we're seeing here for a moment, they help me get to all of these events and take the time to edit this stuff. Like this thing, like I said, uh, random homies who were there uh, helped out. Huge shout out to the cats, man, um, that jumped in to help film. And, and but it was just it took a lot it took a like a day or two of just intense editing work to hammer this thing into something I was proud to share with you guys and it's because of all these companies and some of y'all pitching in on the torch pass that I am able to do this and this isn't some big money business um you know we're just now to the point where we're kind of covering all the expenses involved and you know taking days to edit is still a bit of a you know labor of love but as long as I'm not, like, you know, hemorrhaging my child's college fund away or whatever, you know, my daughter's off to college next year. So, um, yeah, things, things, it's, I'm not some trust fund kid, man. Those companies really help, and some of you guys out there, um, yo, huge shout-outs to everybody who's, who's joined us. I wanted to, uh, give away, uh, some sticker packs to you guys who tuned in. I really appreciate y'all. Yeah, I wanted to show you all these pizzas me and Carrie made. Check it out. Yeah. This is uh, this is me and Carrie's second Neapolitan pizzas. That was so, lunch. This was lunch today. Yeah, mine's on the right there and Carrie's on the left. And yeah, so we're making these things in like an oven that's hitting, you know, over 700 degrees. These things cook in two minutes. And like every ingredient here, the tomatoes, all of it is Italian, even the water. I mean, the basil was grown on, in, in our garden, but, you know. Uh, anyways, so that's kind of a bit of our passion, man. And, and some of it has a lot to do with, you know, going over to Italy and um, having pizza like in Murano. And maybe it reminds us of that, Maybe you know, whatever it'll be. But yeah, pizza is a bit of our passion right now. It's going all right, right? So everybody throw a number into that uh, chat. Uh, how many people are with us right now? It looks like 150 something. Is that right? Or am I, is my thing updating? That's, that's what I see. All right. We'll go ahead and throw in some numbers one through 200. And um, I've got some sticker packs to send out to you guys. And yeah, I've, I've actually got like a thing of envelopes packed up for those of you guys who have won over the past few weeks that I still have to like get out the door. I just made like a hundred sticker packs for like the next round of subscribers. <laughs> and then for those of you guys who have been waiting. So if you've been waiting, you happen, you do get the newest stickers, you know, which is like uh, that glass artist against fascism joint. And those are in my uh, store at, at MikeMasonDesign.com if you want those, man. Um, if you were with us like a month ago, we donated like $440 to the Equal Justice Initiative, um, a really amazing organization that, that fights for kind of like racial justice sort of thing, man. Um, and huge shout outs to Sloth King Glass who designed that sticker and, you know, he was like, well, could you do like a donation on those packs to something involved with BLM? And I was like, oh, hell yeah, it's a great idea. And then I looked into it, and that organization really stood out. So, I mean, I really think they're excellent. Um, there was actually a documentary on HBO about the guy who founded it or whatever, and it, it it's really good. And then their charity navigator uh, rated, like, 100% on everything. And that's kind of rare in that field. You know, there's a lot of, like, uh, there's a lot of bad charities out there that, that spend a lot of money on themselves instead of uh, the mission that they're ostensibly there to support or whatever. So that's something I like to check into if I want to support some shit. So anyways, yeah, get them numbers in. Yo, um, my Patreon players, uh, some good shit's coming soon. Uh, man, that Wicked Glass demo hit recently, but... Uh, I needed to knock out some of these other projects that we that we were like to what we were just watching tonight, and then that fam the flame off special has occupied my time hardcore. But I'm about to get back to you players on Torch Pass, and we're gonna get into some of the Glass Vegas demos. So I'm, I'm expecting to share with y'all the, uh, the Z demo, uh, probably the Chad G demo as well coming nice. up this month on there. Yeah, but if nothing else, that Wicked demo hit. I uh, really appreciate y'all. Now, I mentioned this earlier when we started the show, but uh, Dan Hoffman has a class coming up 
I was mentioning him earlier when we were talking about Frompy, because uh, they both do this incredible micro work. But uh, Dan is, man, Dan's excellent. He's the awesome educator, um, or not educator, but flame worker, rather. And He's highly... a great storyteller, so I can't okay. imagine he's not a great educator, too. I, I've just, I, I didn't mean to say he's not. I just meant to say that he's like a highly educated flame worker is what I was trying to say, but... Right, you know, we're, yeah, we're having a party, baby. His, his education, yes, getting exactly. a little loose. Yeah, you know, yeah. a couple of years ago, I was filming him at Champs, and uh, and then went back to that uh, the piece that he made, and it was all about. I mean, he had a a, a backstory behind oh, yeah. that. It was it was amazing. Um, he he fully he like fully researched it. Had his notebook that out that he like kind of wrote down notes as he was looking into like the ideas behind what he was trying to out there yeah hell yeah in fact if you guys are still putting your numbers in maybe we uh they are it looks like yeah a few here and there i've got my footage actually sorted from champs y'all want to see some fresh footage i had no promises no promises but let's watch dan motherfucking hoffman doing his thizang at champs this past year <laughs> sorry about that guys out. Uh, the volume they it was oh, very okay. loud for a second oh there's the homie making a spoon doing a bull push can't argue with that footage that was a good this is how it is when mike mason's on the camera but <laughs> <laughs> um oh look at this this is part of his miniature scientific set Oh yeah, that was so super. That was Speaking so cool. of these things, you know, where they've got this, you know, symmetrical elements on the side. There's a very miniature one from Dan Hoffman. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, it looks like. All right, here we go. I was about to say, man, I had it fucked up in the game, man. Looking like, uh, looking like he just made a spoon. But it, there's the spoon, and here it is going on this incredible piece that was actually once all those bridges came off. That middle section would free spin and shit. It was awesome. And then each one of those little uh, like things in there is like a fully sealed thing with the what the, the miniatures in it that we were looking at a minute ago. See the telescopes in there and all that shit. Do you remember what molecule was the was this glass? I think it might have been borosilicate. That's a good question. Yeah, I think it was glass related. Borosilicate's probably right. I think, I think so. it may have been, but look at this yeah, yeah. piece. This is incredible. So here he is doing a big, a big boy seal. This just became a Dan Hoffman demo. <laughs> Excuse me. And here we are at Champs. This is Champs Masters, and Dan really is a master. I'm not fucking around. I, I would take that class for the money. It's you know. Wow, that was just this year, right? This was that like was just this year, yeah. We're so ago, lucky that, that like yeah, years ago. it does seem like it was a whole nother time and place when we were able to do this and film someone amazing like this. Here's a whole nother phase of the construction here. Check it out. It's the same grabbers, you know, same size and everything. That's this is fun. crazy. What a bizarre bit of synchronicity. <laughs> so if you need to make a giant piece a chain smoker in the back anyways yeah there's some fresh dan hoffman stees look at this piece i was talking about how it free spins i was like oh shit mike's here so yeah on the bottom this. that's where he had Whee! those, those uh different uh, little elements that we looked at first right yeah look at that shit and look at the little molecules down on the side there that you can barely even see what it is yeah look at this <laughs> all right did everybody get their numbers in i think I oh think here so, we go yeah. check it out he's showing me all the uv effects oh, to nice. see look at this sick 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 piece so yeah you know i just happened to see the uh dustin shared that class and just wanted to give a shout out um because Dan has been kind enough to really let me stick a camera in his face quite a bit. And we have footage from the last Champs Masters as well of him. And there will be specials on those. You know, it's just like the fam thing. It took weeks to edit properly and, you know, to really get that into the shape that I wanted. And, uh, 
you know, I'm not trying to claim I'm no hero or nothing. It's just this stuff takes me away from my work. It takes Carrie away from her work when we do these trips. So, you know. Yeah, this it's last one, I came back from Champs and immediately got in a car and drove to Western Nebraska to go teach. Yeah, it. yeah. It, it's just, it is what it is. It's a labor of love. So it, it just means a lot that, that, you know, that some of these sponsors help us do that and that you guys are here enjoying it and that it all adds up to, to the damn thing getting done, you know? So, all right, this shit was too cool. All right, all right. I don't want to make you guys wait. Um, but let's go ahead and pick some winners. I really appreciate everybody who took the time to join us tonight. Uh, this, like I said, I just got some some fat sticker packs to give out, and then we'll play a game or whatever, and and I'll give the winner of that. But but um, let's go ahead and uh, pick. Get random dot org up, and we'll do this. So yeah, this is just just too super cool. And look at this molecule. Okay, check that shit out. Here we go. Look at that. Yeah, those <laughs> those are ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you guys remember, but uh I do have a very special Let's see if I can find it. Was that a rig or a pipe? Do you do you, uh What's what was that? the that, that damn I mean, feature It had that pipe on the top at least. You know what I mean? When we watched yeah, them push I don't the remember bowl the category. On. What's that? I don't remember the category it was in, like the category for this. Well, it's just that this is Champs Masters, yo. It's... Oh, right. So what was the theme? Do you remember? It was like a thing against time or something. I forget. Look at that. <laughs> Anyways, all right, all right. Let's see if I can find that uh, file I was looking for in the meantime but let's go ahead and pick a big winner here in fact this first pack i will throw in uh some honeycomb cane on the first pack so if you win i want you to hit prize central station at gmail.com and tell me what you won we'll double check and all but it makes it so much easier if you guys just tell me what you won and i can all right here we go 70 is there a 70 I do not see a 70. No, I don't see one either. Yo, all right, check this shit out, my dogs. Click to the clack. Oh, yeah. That's my pendant. It's a Dan Hoffman and Cameron Burns collab. And uh, he basically made a microscopic version of what Dan Ho or of what uh, Cameron Burns does. So this is probably my favorite pendant that i own actually i'm really am not fucking around about being a big fan of dan's work um anyways all right so let's 146 now the next story i'd like to tell before we pick another number no i'm just playing <laughs> story time with grandpa mike who i see in 82 that's my boy josh williams right. music man glass Hell yeah, alright, so my man, I definitely got, uh, bang, and when I got, uh, some Millie for you, too. Man, if you shoot me a message, you can tell me which one of these you want. Um, I've got the red, the half-blood, or the Nemo and the white. They're both, uh, you know, really cool, uh, combs there. And let's, let's pick another winner for a sticker pack. I really do appreciate everybody that tuned in, in good spirits, makes this thing a positive thing for me and you know really makes this whole thing happen because it's a vicious cycle of love i don't see a 76 do i see a one th oh wait am i no, no, here we go all right 131 oh i see a 131 where it at where is it no i don't see one now you don't no it shows me one but Uh, I guess Carrie says there's not one. Maybe, maybe it's got a finding a 131 on my screen somewhere else. All right, clickety clack, 136. Ooh, that's Rob Garrick. Rob, get at me at prize central station at gmail.com. And fuck it, man, I'm gonna upgrade you. 
Whichever one Josh doesn't want, I got for you, man. I'll throw it into a get you a little upgraded pack. And then we'll pick a sticker pack for somebody who sticks around and plays games with us. Uh, if you guys don't know the deal, game night, uh, we play Jackbox games, which means that you use Jackbox.tv uh, as your controller. So you need another tab. You need a tablet. You need something that can access that website that will act as your controller in real time for the game. If anybody in the audience has suggestions for the game that we're going to play, Throw that shit in there now, because I'm about to start uh, Steam up. Oh, and yeah. We'll, and we'll get this bad bad boy going. Oh, shit. Is Carrie sharing something? <laughs> Car yo, okay. Carrie has been working so hard on these tiles. And, yo, they don't look like much uh, solo. Like, Nine what is this? weeks, I saw. This is so yeah. 12-inch paver stones. And this is a mosaic I've been working on for nine weeks. Yeah, Carrie cares. Nearly, nearly show finished. Off, <laughs> show off time for me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Yo, this seriously is sick, though. This is, uh, it's giant. It's like, uh, it's re these are really amazing. Yeah, uh, huge, huge ups, Carrie. That is seriously <laughs> great. Um, all right, here we go. Let's start one of these gizame, rizames. What all should right. we play? Yeah, is any, I don't see any requests. From anybody. Well, I think I accidentally just started Jackbox Five. Oh well. So that that I will. That's what we're gonna just let's, gonna go let's with. Let's see what's in Jackbox Five. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, what have we got? Oh yeah, we're doing this. Huh. General has some advice for phone usage here. He says you can minimize the YouTube to just a little box so you can Yo, use the phone and still watch the anyway. stream. What? I don't know how to do that, so that's awesome advice, but Thank you, yeah. I appreciate I, the advice. I don't know if I would be able to do it. We are going to play a rap battle game. If you're not oh, familiar, yeah. you got to come prepared to bring your best rhymes. <laughs> Usually about glass and insulting everyone. Yeah, and, and glass. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna step away for just a second while this while y'all get in. Damn, everybody hopped in at Look once. Look at that! Awesome. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah, yeah. All right. So normally what I tell people right now is if you if you want to play, it's helpful to have a screen that you can watch the watch the stream on, of course, and then the screen of the controller. So if you're on a computer, you know, that's two windows. If you've got a TV and a phone, that works too. Apparently there's a way to do it with a phone, but I will have to look into that and see if I can't put together some sort of tutorial for everybody. But um, there's two more spaces, and once those spaces are full, there are rooms for audience members, which is what we're going to be signing up for now, is audience members. Because we've got eight people that are ready for maxing and relaxing and rhyming with Doors the miming. This is, this is right, why Carrie's in the audience on this show. <laughs> Check it out. You know it's Shadow Master MC. We got a lot of, let's say, interesting cats up in here tonight. Okay, it's your turn, Rach. I gotta figure out what's going on with all these robots. Uh, where are you? N never mind. Here's how you do it. We'll ask you for a word or a phrase. We'll use it to complete line one of your rap. You then write a line that rhymes with it. We do that about two times and you have your four line verse. We hear him back, and we vote on that winner, which, honestly, you all are. Shadow, what, what you find out? Thanks for nothing. We doing <laughs> this. Robots or no robots? Okay, where are all my hip-hop heads at? Y'all ready for the battle? I can't hear that. I said, are you ready for the battle? All right, then. Let's get it in. Time to get them lyrics down. I need you to write a word or a phrase, <laughs> then an entire line that rhymes with the one that we give back to you. You need help? Just use the suggestion button on your device.
think you type. Remember to use that right for me button if you're coming up blank. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> See Mike. <laughs> Here are the first matchups. Check it out, all my hip hop heads. We got the first two robot battle rappers ready to go, so let's get it in. Remember to hit those voting buttons during the round. We Bless need to you. know if it's hot or not. Too hot. My body's made of oil. Sitting here, smoking at a boil. I'm not playing games, I'm here to work. Looking like a bird, I sit on a dirt. <laughs> yeah, alright. Alright, alright, okay. all right. All right. All right. Not bad, not I see what you're working with. Where the next bot at? Grab the mic and get busy. That's right, ho. <laughs> <laughs> my mouth's like a trumpet, my brain's like a blue. Came here to dab, now I'm about to puke. <laughs> oh. I like more than they like Carol Basket. Oh, oh, well, now I got to put them in a the trash can. Oh. <laughs> that was good. Okay. Um, that, that's pretty Let's sweet. Go. That, that was good. Yeah. Very glassy. Yeah, check and, it out. Uh, now it's time to use your devices to popular, vote on who popular is guy, more popular than Carol Baskin. <laughs> time to vote. Got to have a good Let's audience go. for your rap battle. Yeah. Speak so fast, they call me the cheetah. Triple mix flame so hot, gotta cool you off with the Brita. I'm sweeter than candy, sharper than fire. Flow so sick, test results say code in my blood type. Oh. <laughs> that was okay. Now let's keep it moving. Next yep. robot, grab the <laughs> good. Was that you? That was me. Damn dog. I've got a time machine and I'm super hungry. Jackbox party packs rule. I wrote this myself. My robot hands are shaped to crush opponents. You can't spell embarrassment without asking. Oh my. <laughs> that was kind of cool. I know you could do better than that though. The battle is over. It's time for you to pick up your devices and vote. Rep for your boy. His horns are looking like the, uh, the marble. Let's get those folks in. The what now? But your your head with your horns. Little bit, little bit, yep. Poor Royce in the chat. Did I miss the video? Like, yeah, you missed it, dog. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you, my dogs. Courtesy clap. Now let's keep it moving. Next two robot battlers. Let's get it in. My words are knowledge. Better than Batman. You're too close, better scoops, Batman. <laughs> I'm spitting fire that's hotter than the chili. Hotter than the sun, better get chilled, you. Oh, -ho! <laughs> that was okay. Wasn't the best I heard, but it wasn't the worst either. Now you know you gotta come back after that. 
My words are like pain time and artists like Pollock. Rub a dub dub, three men in a tub. I'm so ripped, I got muscles on my nose. Nick knack, tidy whack, give a dog a bone. Okay, alright, that's cool. Okay, now it's over. Who's the dopest rapper? Who's the wackest cat? Damn. Gotta give it up to Bob on this one. 13 audience members now. Oh shit, we got a real... Yeah, like a diss here could actually affect your standing in the community at this point. <laughs> Out there, and we'll go uh, make some inappropriate rap battle jokes. <laughs> yup. Damn, Bob. You got a contender. Uh oh. And now we Bob and M Dog. <laughs> nice job, kiddo. It's time for our next battle, so we need the next two cats to step up and get down. Flying high like a big old page rat. Fat sacks ready to eat that. I'm fluent in hustling conversational in wretched. Come with me, get treated like a fledgling. Eh? <laughs> alright, alright, thank you, thank you. Now we gotta move on. Your turn. Come on down. Spot on, mate. That dark and cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As Oscar once said, that's too funny. You were a dumb idiot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 50. Dancing is body talking. <laughs> Yo, time's a waste. Let's keep it moving. All right, now it's time for you to use your devices and vote. Let's get those votes in. Man, got this big old folder of glass artists open from Champs Masters. Got me tempted to start running some random footage. Maybe we'll do that after the game. For the 70, 90, all that stuck around for game time. Right. I really love love uh, playing games with y'all. It's you know, I I know it might be a little bit silly to do this, you know, after we do this last demo, but it means a lot that y'all are here and uh, I love getting to have fun together like this. Now let's check out the scoreboard. Oh, oh. damn. <laughs> Time to tell us why you think you all that. Follow those uh -oh. instructions. All right. Oh, OK, I missed my shit. That's oh, damn, I'm behind now. Uh oh, uh oh, you're probably even with everybody else now.
Got about a minute left. You know you can use rhyme for me to have us fill in your line. Yo, sometime today, you're running out of time. Bam! Diggity, diggity, I'm, I'm just diggity. proud that I've not had to be mean at all this time, you know, because... I always appreciate that. <laughs> Back in the day when we first started playing this game, it was just like, like, what are you doing to your friend's girlfriend or something, you know what I mean? you better be tough. Hit you with the hot rod that's in the blood. I'm a shadow you hit like a glass. So no one can reassemble. Even oh, oh shit, he's talking about that motherfucker. Cut that shit up. That was good. You better bring it, ho. Your raps are slower than mine, just mere sake. Rina, I thought you weren't going to be mean. I'll mess you up making this mystery. Looking for a new immersive history. All right, all right. I'm going to feed my dog whatever you just wrote down. All right, y'all, hmm? voting time. Let's make it happen. Hmm. You got to get them votes in. Really got to look on the bright side, you know, because it's like 57% unburned. <laughs> Rap battles are popular. Yeah. Do you know? Everybody for sees that. Hopping in there. Come on and get down. Let's get it started. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Who's going to win the SS or COVID? Hmm. I'm a pirate king. You're a hail Satan. <laughs> on the flames while I stay ice skating. <laughs> is, this, is this Robert? Uh, exactly. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is totally <laughs> such a blast. <laughs> 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 Where the next spot at? What are you lost in space? You can't hide, Robert. You can't hide. You can't fool us, dog. You're guaranteed to blow it. This terrible line is by design. You should give up rapping and take up fire. Ooh, My doctor fire. says I'm high and tolerant. <laughs> Man, the best right. thing is when your opponent is like not on. there. Right now is the time to vote. So start clicking that button. Did you forget the vote? Ooh, maybe. Somebody was feeling that SS rhyme. Right, SS has like win. four tabs open, you know, like one of them voting for himself. I need my next battle is up and ready to go. Look now, you're about to be smoked. Uh oh. Uh oh. Roll another one and try not to choke. I always spark. Your dust here's a fire. This rhyme done makes sense, so the next opponent I desire. Damn. Wow. All right, thanks, thanks. Now we gotta move on. Now you know it's your turn, right? The punchline, you're the glass dog. 
<laughs> Last God, a shout out to my people in front. If you wanna throw down, meet me at the Wendy's. This line absolutely rhymes with the previous one. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Thank y'all. Maybe didn't quite finish. Okay, so, yeah. now the battle is over. You spent too long on that first one. That first line was a masterpiece, yeah, right. but yeah, it was. that was crazy. I'm still thinking about that one. <laughs> Doctors Club. Bolton time, right now. This is what everybody always wanted on Torch Talk, man. They were like, can all that glass is great, but can we have a rap battle together? <laughs> yeah. I said yes. <laughs> Damn! I was... Ooh, look at that. I know, right? Yes. It's close. All right. Cheer right. bonus. The numbers don't lie. Congratulations. I need my next two MCs to step up here. All right. Ready to go? Uh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Look watch out. out. You're dressed like Teddy Roosevelt. I heard underneath you wear a guard belt. Ooh. Glass fly like Daddy Flat Cheats, Eric Goldschmidt. <laughs> Damn, nice right. and baby. You like that? You like that? That's good. <laughs> Thank you. If you like to take chances, play sorry. Get at me in the Ferrari. <laughs> You're going down in a blaze of politics. COVID and Trump better stop with the bullshit. <laughs> I like the rhyme. I don't, don't disagree with the rhyme. I'm just, you know. Time to vote, y'all. Who brought and who did? One can only tell Yeah. You gotta get them votes in. Like an old camera. What's that? Oh, that, uh, the other character, you're, you're a blue box, and this guy's a guy, one of those. Yeah, this dude's like a facial recognition camera. You don't want to vote for that. <laughs> I'm just playing with it. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, dogs. Thank you. Okay, there's your winning. <laughs> now that was a hot battle. Let's check the scores. <laughs> I'm a rapper. Damn, I have 420,000. That's you know drill, come on. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It means I should smoke weed. Damn, yeah. man, this shit's all crazy. I think my just oh, my just red button keeps getting encountered an error with Jeff Buss. Perfect. This is so good. Right now, just remember, 
The best part of freestyling is that you don't have to be amazing. You just have to be fast and pretty good. So just be pretty good. It's not that hard to be pretty good. So you can use right for me to have us fill in your line, right? <laughs> Yo, we ain't got all day. Here's the card. Ooh, lots of money on the line. Are you ready? Then let's hit with you. Damn, we go right out the gate. This is a, a lot of pressure. <laughs> oh, okay, what that is a top top of the bill. And here and say We're headliners. Yeah, okay, all right. And then I messed my pants. Oh, I'm the cream of the crop. You're a pot of cereal. Orange, you glad I didn't say banana. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, all right, thank you, thank you. Now we gotta move on. All right, they got a serious down. audience developed here. This is crazy. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if it's counting me like multiple times because I have to I've keep got no out for people so cheap. No. Shouldn't we be it discussing knows you. more important okay. matters? <laughs> Trying to keep up? Let me get you a boat. I've been cheating so much you'd think I'd do better. <laughs> that was okay. Wasn't the best I heard, but it wasn't the worst either. Ding ding, the bell has rang. Vote to see who was the dopest MC. Time to vote. I'm already thinking about making another pizza. This is like, damn. <laughs> we gotta go, y'all. <laughs> Luckily for them, our pizza hasn't been sitting out long enough. It doesn't matter. We could still make one. It just wouldn't be as good. <laughs> but it would still be amazing. We got hey, our Doc winner. Roberts. Congratulations. What, well, Doc yeah. Roberts? Now my That's next the boy. are up and they ready We're good to roll. Yeah, yeah. Break out the moonshine. <laughs> you down like a train to Texas. Ooh. Catch me naked in the kitchen, funny slippers, cooking breakfast. You can't Damn. Me. I made <laughs> We should give Jack Box extra money. Mm. <laughs> okay, first, hey, move. That's it. dope. Now let's keep it moving. Time for you to answer. You gotta come strong. I'd usually expect to find you in the hell, but mine's so deep you could tell. You might want to slow down before you get busted. Gonna get you so wet where Jacks will be rusted. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, okay. That was tight. <laughs> tell me who was the whack cat, and then tell me who was the hot line. <laughs> this is a pretty pretty decisive victory. Let's get those votes in expeditiously. Damn! Wow, big money. Big money balling. Good job, good job. Good Homie might have just won a sticker hey, pack at that. Your feet, dude. That's the biggest toe I ever seen in my life. Now it's time for our next matchup. Where my MC's at? Your brain's so small it's the size of a blossom. Make you want to run around, scream, and shout. Uh -huh. Okay, all right, that's cool. Ooh, you gotta respond to that. 
staring at your face was like staring at Jay Edgar who caught in drag acting like you're a big man. Your mouth's full of anti whiskers. Am I winning yet? I was thinking about that J. Edgar Hoover thing earlier too with that garter one, man. <laughs> I was trying to find a way to work your boat then. But it didn't happen. You got J. Edgar Hoover too? Hit the voting button, pick somebody. Well, you know, because we get that. Pick a president or whatever. Mine, so I don't even know if it was any better. I know I got caught up on a syntax thing, but whatever. That's why you ain't getting made like the racist. Hey, get out of my studio. You're losing this game show. That was okay. Let's keep it moving. Sorry to any bassists out there, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Slash? Let's get those boats in. Well, you know, once you actually get rich, it doesn't matter. But until then, the basis does not get laid. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I respect. This split decision. Here's your winner. Congratulations, Shorty. Good job. That was hot. Now we gotta check out the scores <laughs> and see who won. I I did I hold on. Here's your winner. Yeah. All right, I'm I'm a rapper, dogs. <laughs> yeah. Wiki 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 torch talk. Yo, check it out. This is Shadow Master MC. We up out of yeah. here. But who was who was up next? Cause I got a sticker pack for you. All right, <laughs> that's my boy Robert Pelchat. You know. Ah! Nice, nice. <laughs> Robert, I uh, I stuck a sticker pack into that order you placed, so I'm gonna actually uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you wait, read wait. the future. Yeah. I'm gonna call it that. If you want another, let me know. <laughs> I'll send you another if you really want. But I put, I put a, I put a, I hooked that fucking thing up, man. My boy, my boy scooped the fucking uh, Zach Love tool, so he's ready to make like intricately patterned fucking prep. Yeah, he's and uh, yeah, cool. man, I hooked that shit up. So if you want, if you want another one though, dude, I got you all day. But if you open that thing up and you're like, all right, we're good. We're probably good, so. <laughs> um, all right, let's uh, let let's uh, get, let's. What do we got? I would love to do. You don't know Jack, but there's some games in here that like don't fucking work well for this. So, the oh god, what's? Welcomes you to a world of menu screens. Well, you know the one that I like. Which one is that? That one where we all learn about each other with lies. The lies game. That's the one. Carrie likes the lie game. So we're gonna play the lie game because that's what Carrie wants. Carrie gets what Carrie wants, generally speaking. Fibbage, fibbage. That's yes, it. Fibbage. that is it is fibbage. Yes. <laughs> Robert is a rapper. I'm <laughs> 
about you. Song is low key lit. Maybe I'm just high. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound right. Need the Fitbit soundtrack. <laughs> Your mom. Your mom's playing. Yeah. I'll play this music for another 10 minutes if another two people don't join, so. <laughs> I'm gonna give it like 10 more seconds or 30 more seconds maybe. Cookie Masterson, and this is Enough About You, a game I'm hosting of my own free will, and not just so Jackbox will delete the videos of me from the Christmas party. <laughs> You've all got your permission slips signed, right? Okay, everybody on the bus, and anybody watching can join the audience anytime. The audience gets to throw extra lies into the mix and guess the truth along with players. Let's go! Here's how it works. You're gonna see a question about yourself on your device. Just answer as honestly as possible. Then you'll get your chance to make up lies about the other players. You get 500 points for everyone you fool with your lies, a thousand for finding the truth, and on your question, you get a reputation bonus for players who know you well enough to get it right. Ready? Well, I am. Put in your answer now. Saving tip is to <laughs> blank. Okay, enter your lives. Come on, time's running out.
Okay, look for the truth and pick it. Oh. <laughs> Reuse condoms. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> mm -hmm. And what did people pick? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna change my answer to the other one because I think I know which one it is now. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's the truth. I'm telling you, man, they never check if you're actually part of it, and then you just get random checks all the time. <laughs> it's more of a money making tip. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> all right, here it is. Thank you. This player's worst job was blank. Type in your lies now. Hey, I'm serious about that timer. Finish quick. Okay, find the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Man, <laughs> that guy was weird animal jobs. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> Hey, alright. That was a good one. I thought that might have actually been the truth. <laughs> that would have been the truth for somebody that... Bam! That got really it. Was. Hell yeah. Nice. Awesome. Alright, I'm coming up in the game. Let's see how this strikes you. If this player suddenly had extra room in their home, they'd probably hmm. use it for... Blank. Extra room? All right, type in your lies. <laughs> Hurry up and finish before time runs out. Pick the truth. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many good answers here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, who picked what? Fibbing. <laughs> I was wondering if it was that or kidnapping racist, quite honestly. <laughs> it could be both in that case. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the question. A job this player would be excited to try. Say it again. Say it again. And yeah. realize now. <laughs> Bring out the racist gimp. <laughs> mm. 
Hurry, time's almost up. Okay, take a look and find the truth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Not sure how to think of some of these. I, I have to say skydiving actually went through my head. <laughs> okay, what did everyone pick? <laughs> The director of glass. I don't know, I didn't have any good answers, so. <laughs> what? Oh. I'm in charge of all things glass. Mm. Let's see what we got. One of this player's favorite t shirts is the one with blank on it. Write your lies now. <laughs> this is funny. Time's running out. <coughs> okay, seek the truth. It's always the favorite shirt that gets spaghetti sauce. That's a good answer. <laughs> All right, let's see what you guys picked. <laughs> Who is he, Master P? What? Damn. Ice T-shirt would have been the probably coolest answer. Right. Well, there it is. Should have seen that coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, here's your question. The movie this player can quote the most lines from is blank. Answer your lies now. Serious about that timer. Finish quick. All right, find the truth. <laughs> I mean, who's excited about that new Bill and Ted? That she looks pretty good. <laughs> See what everybody selected. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> You're welcome, love. <laughs> Got you, sucker. That's what I almost put. That's too funny. <laughs> Out of my, my big Lebowski glass. 
Uh -oh. You are now entering the final round. Everyone's gonna write one truth and one lie about themselves. Doesn't matter what it is. Dig deep because you get points for any player you fool with your lie and for spotting other players' truths. Go! We're at the halfway point on that timer. Make sure you submit one truth and one lie before it's up. Finish quick before you ruin it for everyone. Yeah, one person. It took me forever. Moment of truth. Which statement about this player is true? Take a guess. <laughs> I want cucumber water is when I hear you. Cucumber melon? Man, there's all kinds of dang shit with cucumbers. I don't know. What could it be? Pickles? Oh, I fucked that up, actually. Sorry, it was the opposite. <laughs> is it really? Okay, which one? <laughs> okay, you want cucumber water. Sorry, man. I'm <laughs> fucked up over here. <laughs> I just had to make sure Carrie didn't get the win. Right, yes, yes. Because <laughs> did not carry the points. Well, my answer was definitely not for you. Anybody, but I can't believe four of you thought that motherfucker would prefer cauliflower over candy. I prefer cauliflower. He sits there and drinks moonshine the whole show. <laughs> yeah, that's true, true. Okay. Just... <laughs> Taking Jolly Ranchers in that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, come on, that was too obvious. I fooled some people. Which is you, it? Your profile picture is you in that. Come on. Not this profile picture. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a profile picture. <laughs> Finally. Nobody enjoys cold working, let's be clear. I think some people do. Yeah, that's what you do in your BDSM room. There you go. <laughs> Spot the truth. Same thing. 
This is like somebody who's like giving up their tail at poker after a couple of rounds, you know? <laughs> Alright, Daryl, you are the best liar. <laughs> she was hot. Oh, she was hot. That's always a fun one. That was good. That was good. Um, yeah, so Daryl, prize central station at gmail.com. And I definitely got a uh, sticker pack for you, man, with all these things here. Um, yo, I, I, we're going to wrap it up there. I wanted to thank everybody who tuned in. I really do appreciate y'all. I mean, it, you guys make it so fun to do this and um, make it possible to do this. So it's, I said, this circle of. Of positivity that makes it possible to keep capturing amazing stuff like this um a huge shout out to you sheen one of the nicest people in the glass game i've ever met like for real and his talent level is just through the roof so anytime that he you know shares with us it's it's uh, beautiful to 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 see um thank you to eric uh, also for man i mean this, this is uh far from the first time he's been on the show and it's, man, always a pleasure to see him do his thing. And uh, to everybody at the Corning Museum who made it possible for us to come up and be part of that uh, whole thing when they had you Sheen there and did these shows. And it was a re an experience I really remember. Um, we got to get back up there and get that pickle plate at, uh, what is it, the place, Gary? It's like Hoof and Foot or something. Yeah, yeah. What's that? I'm just playing. Um, but the, they yeah, had a no. great pickle plate. They did. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. It's like hand and foot. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's, that's a right. Boom. I think that's right. Okay, so Corning is a beautiful city. The museum is incredible. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to take a class there, you must do it. You must go to the library. You Check out should... the museum. Oh, my God. that The whole thing. Yeah, um, it oh, really is Carrie. beautiful. Let me close this up and let, let Carrie in on the conversation properly because... Still have video games on the screen. Go away, Fibbage. We were done lying. <laughs> <laughs> Turning over a new leaf or whatever. <laughs> yes, yes. Go away. All right, here we go. I do want to exit. It's true. It's true. Um, For real, though, thanks to everybody who tuned in. Thanks to everybody who played games with us. I appreciate y'all so much for making this beautiful experience possible and making it possible to give our industry and just the medium of glass what it deserves, which is this type of comprehensive coverage, this kind of party. Y'all are the best. Peace. Oh, am I going to? You are going to, Carrie, yes. That's oh, such a great to... place to pop off, though. You get to say goodbye. You know, you have to also do the, the chest perfect. bump. and the... yeah. Yeah, you got to um, do that, too. This bumps to everybody. Thanks. <laughs> Seriously, thanks for joining us. It was a lot of fun hanging out in chat. Chat started off tonight as a, a party on its own. Um, and thanks to everybody that's still here watching. It's a great time. Thanks to Mike for doing all the editing and throwing all this together for us. And No big deal. This is yeah. an honor and a pleasure. We'll as it is next... to yeah, yeah. as yeah. it is to be here with you Carrie thank you uh -huh. <laughs> all right good night everybody <laughs>